Y'all, let me tell you right. It's okay. My boy Habib filming that special. I see you, baby. This is a big night for him, man. One of my favorite fucking comedians in the city. By way of San Francisco, make some noise for the very funny Nathan Habib! Man, Hon honestly, I deserve all that shit, to be real. I'm not even, I've been performing at parks for over a year. And the pressure to perform at a park is way higher than at a club, right? If you're at a club and no one laughs at your jokes, you're just a comedian workshopping material. If you're at a park and no one laughs at your dick joke, you are arrested. It's <laughs> done. <laughs> I quit my office job like right before the pandemic to do stand up full time. Yeah, woo, no. <laughs> nah. Not woo. Because I made a big deal about it too. I went on LinkedIn. I was like, just quit my job today. <laughs> Best decision ever. Follow your dreams no matter what. <laughs> then the pandemic went. I went back on LinkedIn like a hoe trying to come back to her sugar daddy. <laughs> you know? Hey! Who's hiring? <laughs> Got on the phone with recruiters like Asa, bro. They're like, so Nathan, tell us where you're from. That's like a hard question for me, man, because my mom is Latvian, my dad's Italian, they met in Israel, somehow I was born in Belgium, and then we moved to America with an Arabic last name. So I just told recruiters I'm Puerto Rican, you know? <laughs> it's just easier. You know? Recruiters called me out though, they were like, Puerto Rican? Your last name's Habib. <laughs> that is so diverse. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Had to do those like Zoom interviews, bro. I don't know if any like if you guys did that. I've never experienced so much pressure in the bedroom in my life, bro. <laughs> You're in your room, you gotta open up your computer. This executive is just staring right at you. He's like, so Nathan, why do you want this opportunity? I'm like, all right, um, do you see my mom in my background making my bed? Like, <laughs> that's why I want this opportunity. I, <laughs> you know? You know you're messing up an interview when they start asking the most like simple questions, right? At one point, the guy was just like, what do you think we do here? <laughs> For real, and I just like froze, you know? Like I froze physically, so he would think my screen is frozen, you know? <laughs> to buy me time? <laughs> and then I just shut down my computer because I don't need that pressure in my bedroom. <laughs> I did have a smooth moment one time. You can totally take this if you want. Um, there was one person, a hiring manager, she was like, she was like, Nathan, do you have any experience closing six-figure deals? And I was like, actually, I got experience closing seven-figure deals. And she was like, really? And I was like, can I get your number? And she was like, what? <laughs> Never mind, oops. <laughs> I ended up, uh, I got a good spot. It's like a good company and they take care of their employees. Like they had like a Zoom, they had like a, they hired a yoga instructor to show us like stretching exercises over Zoom. The thing is that like, I didn't know that's what we were doing. So I just like go on the Zoom, all of a sudden I see this like hot Eastern European chick just like staring right into the camera, moving her hips side to side. I thought I logged into my OnlyFans account, bro. Like <laughs> I was trying to tip, but Zoom doesn't have that functionality. I was like, whoa. 
Then you got the dorks on the like side of the chat that are just like, OMG, these stretches are so helpful. And I try to be part of the company culture, so I'm like, OMG, is anybody else super hard? Like, this is great. I don't know, man. I'm excited to go back to the office, kinda. Like, I just love goofing around, right? Like, I would play this game every day. I used to work in a big building. If you work in a big building or like live in a big building, just play this game. Anytime I would go in the elevator and somebody else would walk in, I would ask what floor, but I wouldn't press any buttons. <laughs> Awkward level through the room, dude. I was so much fun. I'd be like, seven? Got it. <laughs> And then they leave and I'm like, happy Friday. <laughs> Even though it's Tuesday, it's all messed up, bro. <laughs> One time we had Taco Tuesdays and I went up to the lunch lady, or as she calls herself, office manager. <laughs> and... <laughs> I went to get seconds, but all the food was gone. Uh, and I was like, what's up with that? And she was like, oh, we do this amazing thing where uh, we take all the leftovers and we bring it to the homeless shelter nearby. Isn't that amazing, Nathan? Now, what I should have said was yes. <laughs> but what I said was, where is this homeless shelter? <laughs> I just love goofing around, you know? Like, how to write a company feedback form, right? Like, first question, what should your manager stop doing? I wrote working here. Um, yeah. All right. People hate their boss here. What should he start doing? Putting on deodorant. <laughs> I had a boss that biked to work. Bikers love to talk about their commute. It makes no sense to me, right? Yeah, three miles uphill, saving the environment, saving trees, Nathan. I'm like, all the plants in our office have died because you smell like ass. <laughs> I've just never seen artificial plants die before. This is crazy. But you can't be, like, you can't be sarcastic at work. That gets you in trouble, you know? Like one time a, a woman came up to me and uh, it was like my first week, you know? And she was like, hey Nathan, how's orientation going? And I was like, it's going great, learning a ton. Just saw the sexual harassment video. Did not know you couldn't do that. <laughs> she was like, I'm sorry, what was that? And I, I was like, no, I'm sorry. Thank you for the video. Um, <laughs> we did have an incident one time. There was this guy named Greg and uh, Greg was in a wheelchair and everyone in the office called him Hot Wheels. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can totally laugh. And you can laugh because the reason everyone called him Hot Wheels is he asked everyone to call him Hot Wheels. Greg is a fun guy, doesn't take life too seriously, you know? But we had to stop because there was a woman named Jessica, also in a wheelchair, and people didn't want Jessica to think that we only give Greg a nickname just because he's in a wheelchair. And I'm all about diversity and inclusion, so I started calling her Monster Truck. <laughs> Yeah. Not because she's in a wheelchair. Um, but because she's fat. And yeah. This side fucks with me. This side is handicapped. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Look, I had a nickname at work. I didn't like it, you know? BSG, right? What is that? Bob Saget Giraffe. Yeah. <laughs> Hated it. Don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it, but like much like Greg and Jessica, I learned to roll with it. Mm. Mm. be real right like body shaming is a real problem you know and like especially in the workforce you know like you guys won't believe me but like I would get body shamed at work like all the time 
right? And like, I would eat at my desk and people would be like, where does it all go, Nathan? You're so skinny. You're like a shoestring with glasses. Yeah. I would get body shamed with no consequences. And yet, anytime I told the new girl I want to suck her boobies with a straw, everyone's offended because we don't use straws anymore. Where is the line and how do you snort one without a straw? You know? It's weird. Oh man, this is great, man. Like, I'm so grateful because, you know, I was supposed to do this like a year and a half ago, like right before the, everything like went down, you know? So this is a special moment. And I think we all had these like moments in mid-March of 2020 where we knew it was about to go down, right? Like, mine was, uh, I was on the subway, right? This is like when NBA got canceled, Tom Hanks got COVID. <laughs> Packed. <laughs> like, this is the beginning of it, right? Like, packed subway. Everyone knows it's about to go down, right? Everyone's like super serious and no one's saying anything. All of a sudden, this guy stands up and he just says it. He's like, people in China need to be quarantined. <laughs> and I've never heard of the word quarantine before in my life. I had no idea what it meant. So I stood up and I was like, yo, cool it with the racism. <laughs> There's a Chinese person sitting right here. And that guy was like, actually, dude, I'm Korean. <laughs> and I was like, not the point. I'm trying to help you guys. Like... <laughs> and then all, for all, like, all of a sudden, I'm quarantining with my parents, just like that. What I, what I thought was going to be two weeks, you know, four months of no masturbation. Like... <laughs> respirator asap but it wasn't that bad i have immigrant parents so it's fun it's fun you know immigrant parents like their english is so weak but their confidence is so strong <laughs> like one morning i woke up and my dad's just like watching the news like drinking his coffee and i opened the fridge and i'm like yo dad what happened to all the milk like it's all gone and without even looking at me he's just like uh, listen uh, you sneeze you lose <laughs> I s how does that make sense for you, Dad? Like, <laughs> if you got the sniffles, you messed up, bro. The lockdown was really tough on my mom. Uh, it's still tough, like all the COVID stuff, because we were having dinner one night and she was like, she stopped eating and she was like, oh, COVID is ruining my summers. They canceled Burning Man again. <laughs> yeah, she went to the last two Burning Mans. Yeah, I went with her in 2019. Uh, it was the last one. And people were like, oh my God, that's so cute that you took your mom to Burning Man. Nope, she took me. <laughs> yeah. And people were like, yo, you're going to Burning Man? Yo, bring condoms because you're about to get laid in the desert. I was like, I'm going with my mom, bro. Like, <laughs> and they're like, well, everyone's got a fetish. You know, do what you got to do. That's a hard one, I know, that's a tough one. But people are like, yo, are you, did you like do shrooms with your mom? And I was like, of course not. We did them separately. That's... I just started doing drugs and it's great. I mean, like I never did it in school ever because I listened to those slogans, like I was all about the slogans, right? Like, you can't hang with me unless you're drug free. And I'm like, I don't have any friends, I'm down, let's do that. And that's cool, you know? But then I got older, I'm like, these slogans are dumb, right? Like, I, I'd rather eat bugs than do drugs. No. <laughs> no. Or like, come with me and be drug free. You sound like a pedophile. <laughs> my favorite one is like, lions, tigers, bears, oh my, drugs, alcohol, smoking, goodbye. I don't know what those animals have to do with any of that. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure the guy that wrote that was like super high. <laughs> the slogan now should just be like, yo man, having no friends is rough, have a puff. <laughs> I never did drugs in college. I went to UC Santa Cruz. <laughs> yeah, 
It's like the most hippie dippy school in all of America, you know? And I know like everyone has pride on their college. They're like, no man, we, re no bro, no. You see, you know your school is perpetually high when your school logo is a smiling banana slug <laughs> with glasses reading a book on Plato in the forest. Like, <laughs> it's a wrap. Yeah, the alumni department, they still call me to donate, which is weird. Like I, ma you know, I majored in film. <laughs> like people that major in film, they don't have money, you know? They have dreams and anxiety, like that's all they got. If I worked in the alumni department, I'd have a strategy, you know what I mean? Like I'd call people that majored like in math or science, you know? Like I'd start at the end of the alphabet, right? Like Wu, Wong, Wang, you know? Like. <laughs> Yeah. I did that joke one time and there was a person that came up to me after the show and you know she was like yo that that joke is like really racist to Chinese people and I was like actually those names are Korean so <laughs> yeah. look I know I come off intelligent but um <laughs> Actually, I had a learning disability when I was in school. And I said had a disability because I'm, I graduated. But I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I was slow, or as my very uh, liberal teachers would call me, uh, retarded. It was the 90s, that's how we got down, you know? Kids would make fun of me. They'd be like, Nathan, how do you not get this? You're such an idiot. And the teacher, the hero, <laughs> would be like, Billy, no, Nathan is not an idiot. He's retarded. <laughs> now go apologize. So, you know, it would be me, like, in, with my own proctor in this separate room. And she was so condescending, you know? She'd be like, all right, Nathan, you get extra time on your test because you're retarded. <laughs> Um, but I just want you to know you are just as smart as the rest of the class. Like, why are you saying that? You know, is the teacher with the rest of the class? Like, all right, guys, here's your test. But before you start, I just want you to know you're just as smart as Nathan. <laughs> Some kid in the back is like, is that that retard that word? <laughs> so it would be me with four ESL Mexican students. And like, I'm young, I'm confused. So I go up to the proctor and I'm like, yo, I'm slow, I'm not Mexican. <laughs> and they went up to the proctor and they're like, yo, we're Mexican, we're not retarded. Like, <laughs> I don't know who was more offended. This is cool, man. I love this, man. We're out here, we're packed, we're doing it. You never know, dude. You never know when it's gonna end, right? You like, we experience that. We gotta say yes to everything. Anytime someone's like, hey, you wanna come? Yes, I don't know when it's gonna, yes. I got, uh, I got invited to go to Muay Thai and I said yes, because I was starving. Uh, I get to the gym. Bro, these people are insane, dude. They're so strong. Like, shoulders just tickling their earlobes. Just this one dude, I see this guy, he's like done with the treadmill. He wasn't running on it, he was curling it. And <laughs> insane. Goes to the bench press, looks at me, and he's like, yo, bro, can you spot me, bro? Spot me, bro. I'm like, I have no idea what that, I just pulled out my wallet. I'm like, yeah, man, how much do you need, bro? I got you. Bro. <laughs> Just don't beat me up, this is bad. <laughs> Here's some advice, never work out with someone that's a lot stronger than you, cause he was done with the bench press and he was like, all right bro, your turn. <laughs> I don't know what's more demoralizing, taking each plate off from the bar, <laughs> one by one, or realizing that I need a spotter just to put the equipment away, like, <laughs> that sucks. So we start the class, right? It's my first day, I don't know what I'm doing. So the trainer, he like pairs me up to, to, with this girl, right? And like, I, okay, yeah, like women can fight, they're very strong, right? I didn't get paired up with a woman, I got paired up with a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> yeah, 
And so we're doing this like punching exercise and we're like, you know, and then she just like stopped me. And she said, she was like, you know, you can, you can punch harder if you want. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. And she's like, what, because I'm a girl, you're not gonna punch as hard? Are you serious? The future is female, punch me. And I was like, um, little girl, I can't punch any harder. And I'm just trying to make some friends. You're being a bully right now. Like, I don't Be like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta say yes to everything. You have, everyone is excited. There's like this intensity, right? Because you just don't know. Like, everyone's happy to have a job. I walked into an REI. The guy working there was about it. I go in there, he's like, welcome to REI. What kind of gear are you looking for? You going camping, kayaking, canoeing? What is the adventure that you need to share? I was like, bro, I get cold in my apartment. Um, <laughs> what? I tried to buy a rain jacket and the guy's like, rain jacket, got it. What kind of protection are you looking for? The rain? Is that a trick question? What are we doing, bro? Like, he's like, no, you're looking for a hard shell or a soft shell? Yo, why are you asking me Taco Bell questions? He's like, you don't understand. We have water repellent jackets, but we also have water resistant jackets. What do you think? I think those two words mean the exact same thing. Right, like when I'm at a club and girls are resisting me or repelled by me. That's the same scenario, I'm dancing alone, it's done. This fool is like, okay, okay, I think what you need is a waterproof jacket. Yeah, I, I know. Like, who goes to REI and they're like, yo man, I'm looking for a rain jacket. I'm not looking to stay totally dry though. You got a jacket that will like resist water, but given a couple drops, that will be perfect. <laughs> Just dry and warm, you know? Killing two birds with one stone, right? I said that out loud and some hipster got so offended. They're like, you just say killing two birds with one? Wow, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I think what you meant uh, was feeding two birds with one hand. And New York is changing me a lot. Because all I could think, think to say back was, uh, I'm sorry, what I meant uh, was choking two vegetarians with one hot dog. <laughs> Namaste. I am super excited to travel again. I'm all about that. Like last big trip I went on was in Zambia. And if you don't know where Zambia is, it is a beautiful country uh, in Africa that borders with Wakanda. <laughs> and if you don't get that joke, you need to go on a march or something. Like. I'll be real though, I didn't go to any marches in the summer of 2020 um, because I was staying with my parents and they're both over 65, so they have like a really high chance of uh, getting racist. Um, <laughs> can go. Had to, uh, had to get vaccines to go to Zambia. Before vaccines were cool, you know? And like, I went up to the doctor and the doctor gave me all the shots except hepatitis B. Which was, I was like, why are we skipping this one? And he's like, oh, that's only if you plan on having sex in Zambia. I was like, all right, like why are you cock blocking me right now? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> He legitimately was, looked at me, he's like, you really are gonna have sex in Zambia? It's like, are you racist or do you think I just can't get any ass? Like, which one is it? 
I got there and I felt so guilty immediately because I was staying at my hostel. All the other visitors were volunteering for stuff. So they would be like, well, what brings you to Zambia? And I'm like holding a coconut with a straw, you know? Like, I was like, I don't know. I'm like, I saw the Lion King one time and I like giraffes, not because I look like one, but you know, like they're cool. And Can you fix the Wi-Fi when you're done, by the way? But if you're busy at Kuna Matata, I don't know, bro. Like, I did a sketchy safari when I was there, man. It was so messed up. I got there and I saw a sign. It was a walking rhino tour. Okay, let me break that down, right? Like no fence, no Jeep, just me, a guide, a couple of tourists, and a rhino. What? And the guide was real gangster about it. He was like, he was like, he was like, okay, we're about to walk in the park for 90 minutes to see the rhino. I just want to let you guys know we might not see the rhino. And I was like, this is the best business model I've ever <laughs> encountered in my life. <laughs> we walk around for an hour. I'm shaking. I'm freaking out. There's a dinosaur on the loose, you know? I'm so scared. All of a sudden, we see the beast. We see the rhino. And I am just like so terrified. And one of the tourists leaned in, some like Southern dude, probably from Texas or whatever. And he just leaned into me and he was like, buddy, I see you kind of scared there. <laughs> Don't worry, our God has a gun. If the rhino charges, we're fine. <laughs> I was like, bro, you don't get it. There's only like four rhinos left in Zambia. It's like their entire economy. There are over a thousand Jewish comedians trying to make it in New York City. <laughs> if the rhino charges, he's shooting me, bro. <laughs> Everyone's got a dream in New York City. Everyone, right? Even when you don't need one, you know? Some guy on the street just stops me, right? I'm just minding my own business. He stops me. He's like, yo, bro, I'm out here every day, all day, no sleep because hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. Dog, I'm out here. I was like, all right, but we're at a farmer's market. Like, what are we? You're selling cupcakes, bro, what? Everyone is hustling or looking for apartments. That's the deal, bro. Doesn't matter if you bought a place, signed a lease, you are looking. This year, my landlord, called me and she was like, you're the best tenant ever. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm selling the apartment. You gotta bounce. <laughs> so you know what I said? Fuck that, I'm buying this place. Yeah, 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 that's right. I've never bought property in my life. I didn't know what I was doing. So I called my bro and I was like, bro, I'm trying to buy this apartment. I don't know what I'm doing. What do I got to do? And he was like, all right, listen, bro. The first thing you got to do is get pre-approved. And I swear to God, my response was, it's cool. I'm already vaccinated. <laughs> and he was like, nah, you don't know. You need to get pre-approved so you can put 10% down. And I was like, you don't understand. I'm 100% down. Let's do this. Didn't get the apartment. Man, like finding a decent place is so hard, you know? And when you finally find something that's garbage, you have to like trick yourself to think that it's decent. You know when you find a new place, you go up to your friends, you're like, yo, I just found this amazing place. It's got everything that I need. It doesn't have a bathroom. <laughs> but the kitchen sink is huge. Speaking of the kitchen, no oven, but honestly, I don't even like hot food. <laughs> it's on the 12th floor with no elevator, so my glutes will be fuego. <laughs> Best part, the rent, 80% of my income, so steal! <laughs> I remember my first apartment, my landlord tried to hype it up. She was like, you're gonna love this place. It's got a Murphy bed. <laughs> I had no idea what that was. I was so nervous. I was like, hold up. 
Is a Murphy bed a bed where like what can go wrong in bed will go wrong in bed? Because I've had that a lot. I... Turns out it's a, it's a hidden bed that unfolds from the wall to the ground. And it sounds sexy, but it's not. Um, it's like the worst piece of furniture to have in your room when you're trying to make moves because you want to be smooth. I don't know if there's a more presumptuous move <laughs> than unfolding a bed from a wall, man. Like, I'm just like, yeah, go ahead. Um, make yourself feel comfortable. <laughs> what are you doing? No, nothing. No, no, it's just... Let's just stand here and talk. Let's just... I don't have the confidence, you know, to have someone over and be like, yeah, girl, what's up? Yeah. It's about to go down. Yeah. Lady's getting turned on by that. Yeah. Woo, okay. Yeah, man. Ladies, it's crazy, bro been dating during the pandemic. I got a little GF, you know, a little girlfriend, a little sing somebody, a little, you know? Yeah, we just started. I don't know, we just started. When this comes out, I don't know, we'll see what the fuck happens, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, you never know with these shits, you know? So, I'm so happy to have a girlfriend, bro, like dating, like forget her, like dating just sucks, you know what I mean? Like, I dated unemployed during a pandemic, like, it's the worst thing. Bro, I would try to be smooth. They'd be like, so, uh, like, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, it's not about what I do. It's about what we do together. <laughs> the apps are the worst, bro. Like, are you guys together? Are you guys like a thing? How'd you guys meet? Online. Online? online? online. Not on the apps, online on the apps. You know online is like extra freaky, right? Like we will say online. <laughs> online, that's some regular 2000 shit. We're on the apps now, baby. So you, what, did you say anything? Like, did you start it? Like who, like, man, you, you hate this memory, bro. <laughs> this guy's like, bro, fucking, I don't know, dude. And, and she got excited. She's like, you messaged me, I swear to God. I'm not thirsty, you're thirsty. Tell them you're thirsty. The apps, I hate them. You know, I get too excited. Like when I get like matched up with someone, I go too hard, you know? To like, she'll be like, hey, how was your weekend? And I'm like, empty without you. I have to see you, where are you, where are you, hello? Hello, hello, hello. I have no filter, too. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, one time, there was a woman that got, I got paired up with, and she had a picture of her playing basketball. And I was like, how cute would it be if uh, our first date was us playing horse? And uh, she was like, very, especially if you called me a whore. H-O-R. And just to keep up with her banter, I said, I was going to call you that anyways. <laughs> and she said nothing. And the app said, account suspended, so... I have, I have no filter. Like, I was on a first date, and this like, really intelligent woman, she asked like, great questions. And uh, she asked the question, she said, uh, if we were on a fourth date, what question uh, would you ask me? I was like, damn, that's a good question. And I wanted to give a good answer, you know, like a, a good one, so I thought about it. And then I looked her dead in the eye and I said, did you come? <laughs> Still waiting on the second date, but... <laughs> Sexual chemistry is important, you know? Like one time I was with a woman and we were doing the 96. I don't know. You know what that is? Have you? I'll, I'll try to describe it. Um, basically, it's like where you lay opposite of one another. 
and your backs are actually facing towards each other. And it's usually after an argument. Um, it lasts all night. It feels amazing. Something I'm learning is like, you know, you can get in an argument with anything in a relationship. You can argue about anything, bro. Like, I was with this woman one time and she was like, babe, what do you want to see on Netflix? And, uh, and uh, I was like, whatever, like tonight's your night. Like, I don't really care. Like, let's watch whatever you want. She hated that, bro. She was like, hey, I need a man that can make a decision. <laughs> What do you want to see on Netflix? I was like, babe, relax, all right? I've decided we should see other people. Um, we broke up, you know, but we left in really good terms, right? Like, I didn't want to burn any bridges, unless, of course, she was on one. But I'm over it, I'm over it, I'm over it. I got friends that are like in serious relationships, like married and stuff, and you know, they call their wives like the boss, you know, and it's like, it's weird. It's like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like the boss, like, I guess it's kind of empowering, but kind of kind of, it's just like, I've never, it's never with fun things, you know? It's always like the boss has me like doing the dishes or the boss has me picking up the kids. It's never with fun things. It's never like the boss and I, we're doing anal. Um, I'm doing anal with my boss, bro. When I get married, I'm gonna have a lot more respect for my woman, you know? Like, I'm gonna make her feel young, energetic, vibrant, organized. I'm gonna call her my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, these are jokes. I don't, I don't have that kind of money, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna call her my intern, so. How do you know when someone's the one? That's the thing. It's like, I really want to find the one before it's too late. Like, I really want my parents at my wedding, you know? Because someone needs to pay for it. And um, <laughs> but how do you know? You got anything? You know? You just know. Why do I feel like she's 100% the boss of you, bro? <laughs> like, the way you're sitting, dog. You look like you're on timeout right now, dog. Like, you see this guy? Yo, he, by the way, he doesn't have to wear a mask. He's wearing a mask because she told his ass to put on a mask. You feel me? She's like, yo, put on your fucking mask. I'm not fucking with you tonight. But how do you know? How do you know? This is what my rabbi said. Uh, he was like, just ask yourself this, Nathan. Do you see? I don't know why rabbis do that. They turn into like R&B singers. I'm like, just say what you gotta say. Like, I don't Just ask yourself this, Nathan. Do you see her being, being the mother of your children? I was like, whoa. I had no idea she was pregnant. This is, what? I'm kidding, guys, these are jokes. I never go to synagogue, so, yeah. I got bros with kids, man, and like, from what I've seen, like, taking care, taking care of a child is like super hard. Like, it takes a lot of energy to have a fully charged iPad. Um, <laughs> Dude, my nephew's on this thing all the time, kills me, yeah. right? And my brother's like, you don't get it. It's an amazing learning tool, you know? <laughs> He's doing all these math problems, it's incredible. I'm like, all right, fair. But you know what else I discovered recently is like a really good learning tool? A father. <laughs> a father's a great tool. My nephew is five years old. He's saying things I would have never said at his age, you know? Like he just like comes into a room, he like looks at his mom one day, and uh, he's like, hey, mom, what's wrong with the Wi-Fi? It's super slow. <laughs> he is five. Simpler times when I was five, right? I'd be like, hey, mom, what's wrong with dad? <laughs> he is super slow. <laughs> and we need an upgrade, so... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, man. God, my bros, man, they're good people. They're, they're good people. They, they're like complete opposite of one another um, because one is a life coach and the other is a funeral director. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a funeral director in San Francisco. So if you don't know him, some of you will. Like, <laughs> soon. The life coach, bro, ironically, kills me, dude. Because he makes way more money than me, and his business is bullshit. Like, <laughs> it's so dumb. Like, he gave this, like, TED Talk one time, and he was like, the people that tend to live the longest are not the ones that exercise or eat healthy, but rather the ones that enjoy and participate in small talk with strangers on a daily basis. And I think the reason is because those people are killing the rest of us that hate that shit. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, he does these workshops, you know, they're just like, I've been to one of these workshops. They're the worst, man. Like, like what's your name, bro? What's your name, man? Aaron? Nice. He would like go up to someone like you, Aaron, and he'd be like, Aaron, um, you are enough. Uh, <laughs> You are more than enough. You are great enough. That'll be $40,000. <laughs> and he tells me, he's like, listen, Nathan, the reason people pay is because I make them feel alive. I'm like, all right, but if someone wants to feel alive, they can just go to a funeral. Like, they're cheaper, they're free, honestly, they're free. When I tell people, when I tell people my brother's a funeral director, people get weird. They're like, oh my God, that must be like the most depressing job ever, like working with the dead. It's like, maybe. But isn't it sometimes more depressing working with the living? <laughs> right? I think we all had that moment, like, yo, if Monster's Truck from accounting, like... <laughs> If she shows me one more picture of a cat in a costume, I will murder her. And that's where my brother comes in. That's why he does so well, you know? Yeah, but I, I prefer funerals over weddings any day. For real. Because, like, like, weddings are fun, but funerals remind you to always have fun, right? Like, also, best part, you don't have to bring a gift to a funeral. Yeah. Also, why are we bringing gifts at weddings? Makes no sense to me, right? Like you hear the speech, right? You hear like, oh my God, thank you all for coming. I have everything that I need. I couldn't ask for anything more. <laughs> I'm in the back with the check like, all right, then I guess you don't need this, right? Like we're good, like. We need to bring gifts at funerals, you know, when they're at their low. Right. Like, I am so sorry for your loss. Here's a blender. <laughs> You're crying because you love it. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, man, this is fun, man. Like, I just, I don't know. I feel like we're at a stage right now in our lives where, like, we're maybe you're like, we're not fully done with the pandemic, whatever, but we're like, we are reflecting about our 2020 and like, it's almost a competition of like, who had the worst 2020? And like, we've all had that conversation and I, I had that with my family because I, I, I started it. And um, <laughs> I was like, you know, I couldn't follow my dreams of being a comedian. And, uh, and my dad was like, forget your dreams. I had to retire during a pandemic. Like we got bills to pay. And my mom was like, you were supposed to retire years ago. I couldn't go to Burning Man. <laughs> and my, my brother was like, mom, you were never supposed to go to Burning Man. Um, I got to get a divorce with two kids. And my, uh, my other brother, my oldest brother, um, he leaned in and, and he kind of like quietly just said, he was like, I discovered that I have colon cancer. Yeah, and it got like really quiet and like, like, you know, we, we were embarrassed. Like, we were really embarrassed. And, and I leaned into my brother, and I was like, yeah, but 
you, uh, you technically found that out this year. <laughs> and, we're, and we're talking about 2020. <laughs> So please don't interrupt. Um, yeah, my, my bro's got uh, my bro's got colon cancer, but it's not all bad news because it's the funeral director, bro. So potential for like a major family discount. Um, oh, guys, shut the fuck. Y'all a bunch of guys. He's here tonight. It's cool. We can laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, he's here. He's here in spirit, but he's here. <laughs> ah, I wanted to do that so bad. Uh, he's here. Yeah, man, he's got it, you know? And it's like, I gotta say, the support is incredible. Like, friends and family call you and check in on you and. Um, it's nice, but, but then you also got people that you haven't talked to in literally years hitting you up. Like, I got a text from an unknown number, and uh, it was some guy who texted me. He said, hey, I know last time we talked was under the bleachers in middle school, <laughs> but if, if you ever want to talk about your bro, I'm here for you. And my first thought was like, did I suck someone's dick in middle school? Like, <laughs> And my second thought was, was I good at it? Like, I just wanted to know. <laughs> I, uh, I had to get a colonoscopy, and, um, and that was like, oh, man, that was rough, man. It was weird, like, to see if it's not, like, genetic, and everything worked out, thank God, but, like, the screening process was weird, because, like, the nurse was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of hard to flirt when she's asking questions like, do you have any anal bleeding? I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> But I did have a smooth moment. Uh, at one point, she had like a diagram of all these different kind of poops. And she was like, which poop most resembles your poop? And I was like, shit, girl, whatever poop you into. Like, what are you doing? So. But comedy has taken itself to a whole new level because my parents, they call me and they're like, are you making your brother laugh? Like, he needs to laugh. Like, it really helps fight cancer. Like, please make him laugh. And I have this anxiety that the doctor will come out one day and be like, um, yes, um, we've done everything that we could. Um, what we do know is that if he only heard three more dick jokes by his brother, you might have had a full recovery. <laughs> this is really cool for me, man. Like, this, this place is home. Like, truly, like, this, this stage, like, this area is, like, home for me. And, you know, to not be here for, like, two years, it was wild. And, like, this is special. And, you know, when I was, like, 15, um, it was, like, I did, like, my third show ever, you know? And a comedian came up to me. He's like, listen, if you want to take this seriously, if you want to take this comedy thing seriously, you got to log into the San Francisco Bay Area Comedy Yahoo group. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't know what a Yahoo group uh, was, just imagine social media, but instead of getting like likes or followers, you would get Corona on your computer. Like that's... <laughs> I log in, I'm like, again, I'm 15 years old, I don't know what I'm doing, and like, I'm like, hey, I've like, I just started doing comedy, like, I think I'm pretty good, would love to get on your show. And like, comedians like, roast me right away. They're just like, who brought a kid to the chat room? Like, what is this? Do we have diapers in the comedy club, you know? I was like, that's it, like, I'm not part of this, I'm done, you know? All of a sudden, I get this message from, uh, from this guy, like a private DM message, and he was like, hey, these comics are just messing around, hey, listen, I'm headlining the San Francisco Punchline on Sunday. If you want, you can drive up to me, drive up with me in San Francisco, and uh, you know I can introduce you to the comedy scene, and you'll get booked that way. And I was so flattered and excited that like the headliner would reach out to me specifically, you know. And I got so excited, I responded right away. I was like, I'm super down. Here's my home phone number. Here's my home address. Let's party. 
and he responded being like, bro, I'm so much older than you. Like, I need to meet your parents. That's not going to fly. I was like, oh, that's right. My bad. My, of course. <laughs> so Sunday rolls around. Uh, he rings the doorbell. And, um, and I open the door. And there he is, Jimmy Gunn. He's like, hey, I'm Jimmy. Nice to meet you. And he's got like a, a, like a giant baseball cap, kind of short guy. And he meets my parents. They sit in the living room for 20 minutes, right? And, uh, and after 20 minutes of just like chit-chatting, my parents are like, all right, have fun with Jimmy. <laughs> Parenting 101, bro. Like, what? <laughs> Eventually, we get to the club, and, you know, I'm nervous because it's, like, sold out, and I'm like, how am I going to get in? I'm 15. I'm not even a comedian, you know, and the doorman's looking at me, looking at Jimmy. Jimmy's looking at the doorman, and Jimmy's like, it's cool. Nathan's a comedian. He's with me, and I was like, oh, shit. All right. Better recognize. Like, here we go. It's our <laughs> career has started. I walk into the punchline for the first time ever, and I just fall in love. Like, I, it's just like my Disneyland, you know? Just beautiful, right? The backdrop, just amazing. And so I lean into Jimmy, I was like, Jimmy, can we please do this every Sunday? And that's exactly what we did. Every Sunday, yeah. He would drive me to the punchline, right? And then like, as years went by, I would have my license, I would drive him, we would take turns, right? Fast forward 10 years, right? And I'm hosting the Sunday Showcase, the same show that he introduced me to. And what was crazy was like, I was super nervous because the Sunday Showcase is a hard show because it's like a sold out audience, but it's also like comedians in the back, like the local comics. So like imagine doing your job in front of a sold out audience, but also in front of your peers that can do your job better than you, right? Like, <laughs> it's tough, man. But then all of a sudden, like Jimmy showed up, which was unexpected because he wasn't in the lineup. And I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, bro, I introduced you to this place. Come on, like, of course I'm gonna be here. I was like, wow, thank you. And uh, the club let him go up, which was like, he wasn't on the lineup, right? So they made an exception and, and, he, uh, and he headlined the show. And it was cool, because I was hosting, so I got to bring him up. It was like a full circle thing. And, and then he did something I've never seen. He brought me back on stage and told everybody the story I'm telling all of you right now. Two weeks later, um, a woman goes into my brother's office and, uh, and she was like, hey, my, my husband just passed away. And my brother was like, I'm sorry to hear that. What was your husband's name? And she was like, Jimmy Gunn. And my brother was like, wait, the comedian? And she was like, oh, you saw him perform? And he was like, my brother just did a show with him. And then she looked at the name tag and she was like, wait a second, are you Nathan Habib's brother? And he was like, yeah. And she was like, damn. Jimmy would talk about Nathan all the time. And so, you know, like, my brother gives me the news, and he had complications, he was on dialysis or whatever, you know, but I thought about it, and I was like, this is sad, but also it's kind of like perfect, you know, that in like, in the span of 10 years, a stranger becomes a mentor, and a mentor becomes a legend, and because of him, this place is home. And, you know, I go to the funeral, it was my first funeral ever, you know, and, my brother was directing it, and I, yeah, I was like, what are you doing here, you know? <laughs> and I get there, and, uh, and I see his wife, you know, and I've never, I've never met her before, but I could tell it was her. And she could tell it was me, and she came up to me, and she's like, you're Nathan. And I was like, yeah, and she was like, wow, man, Jimmy loved you. He talked about you all the time. He loved you so much. And I was like, look, I am, I am so sorry for your loss. Here's a blender. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good night, San Francisco. I love you so much. Peace.